How we doing? Fox back again for sound design tutorials. This is going to be a, uh, a video. It's based on a request, not a request, it was like a, a thread in the Access Virus TI group on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description to it if you've got a virus and you want to get in on the conversations we have. It was how to make your apps more musical and more rhythmical. Apps being arpeggiated sounds. Um, plenty of ideas, plenty of tips to I a way to do this there's a lot of things that I do um, using LFOs and stuff so yeah I'm just going to show you a little idea that I've got I'm going to draw in some MIDI notes create an app and then I'm going to show you how you can add a lot of movement to them um, rhythmically get things going on beat and uh, yeah make them sound really wide and really cool so this is the track I've got so far <laughs> So yeah, for this instance, we're just going to just keep the rhythm. I'm going to mute everything else. The bass isn't in that group anyway. This bongo we can do away with. As you can hear, um, this is a remix I'm doing of one of my cousin's track tracks uh, called Somewhere. Is is an absolute sample genius. He uses... Everything he does is samples, all of these and stuff is ripped from tracks. It's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, we're just gonna do this little drum groove here. We're gonna drag this MIDI clip over. We'll pinch the MIDI progression we've got. Obviously the MIDI notes make a hell of a difference in how rhythmical and how musical they sound, but I'm just going to prove to you that you don't need super intense chord structures to make some really nice rhythmical musical sounding arps. So I'm quickly just going to draw in these chords in A minor, I don't know what the the tracks in at the minute. It's not A minor because that's there, but hey ho. Maybe we'll stretch this out. Delete you. Stretch that out. So So, we're going to turn on the arpeggiator. In the virus, we're just going to choose uh, an up and down. We'll um, just set it to eight beats, put it all in. Change the ratio to one over eight. One thing you can do, um, especially with the arpeggiator inside the virus, if you go into the matrix section, if we change velocity on, if we go to the oscillator, the easy page, turn the, the volume, oscillator volume to zero, if we change velocity on, I thought there was a velocity mod wheel, channel pressure, pitch bend, breath, hook pedal. I've done a video on this, it must be velocity on to volume, oscillator volume. 
So now we should be able to. You can hear the volume going up and down now to these increased velocity spikes. It's already given it a bit of a groove. We're going to introduce a bit of swing. So let's go ahead and make a classic app sound first. We're going to, as always, use a hypersaw, all the voices. Go to the filter section, create a pluck, pull it down, introduce the uh, envelope. Do the same with this one then, Hypersaw, introduce some detune, we'll pitch this one down an octave to give us a bit of variation, or maybe up an octave. So yeah, there's your basic app. It's pretty slow at the minute. We could double time it if we wanted. But yeah, how do we make this more rhythmical or more musical? We're going to use a lot of LFOs to do some cool modulation. Uh, how we can do that is... We can use an LFO to modulate the cutoff and filter one. We've separated the cutoff link, we've separated the filter balance. So now if we go to the LFO, we've already got an LFO pre-mapped to filter, so if we dial it just to filter one. Set it to something a little bit slow, like half note. Maybe something a bit quicker. You can hear now we're moving that band pass back and forwards, a free running LFO because the trigger phrase is unchecked, which means it's just, just going to keep going. Um, the pluck is still being created by the uh, filter on filter 2. One thing I am going to do now is introduce some reverb. I'm going to change it to a small room. I'm going to use an LFO 2 in the matrix section. LFO to unipolar, so it's only going to go one way, and I'm going to get this to control the reverb mix. I'm going to use it to turn the reverb mix on and off. Reverb send, I believe it's called. LFO 2 is already being used, so we'll use LFO 1 and we'll do it. I'm 
We'll do it a slightly different rate. We'll do it one over one. Do a squared wave. that reverb send pulsing in now with that uh, saw wave that we've got so it's turning on for half of the modulation amount and it's slowly decreasing for the other half of the modulation amount and we've got it set to one bar so it's every other beat it's giving us a bit more rhythmical movement making it sound more musical we're going to turn the delay on we're going to set it to something off beat so it mingles nicely going to change it to a three and five pattern we're going to use LFO2 which is the half bar rate to modulate the delay send so you can have the delay coming in and out at a different rate to what the reverb is coming in and out Delay send. Okay, let's change the sound up a bit just to get something a little bit more distinctive. We're going to choose the Kling Klang as one of my favourite wavetables. We will use the faster LFO, which was LFO1, to modulate shape index. Oscillator one. So this is going to move the grey knob around the outside of the oscillator, change it, sweeping through the wavetable. Already we're getting a lot of movement, a lot of different textures, a lot of different tones by using just sim some simple LFOs to modulate some stuff. One thing I like to use a lot is the valve filter. And we will use a totally different LFO for this. We'll use LFO3. We're going to set it to sample and glide, which means it's going to change to different random amounts, but it's going to glide between them. We're going to set this to quite a fast clock weight, 1 over 8 maybe. Um, yeah, and it was going to be filter bank frequency. I don't know. Sometimes this can be a bit glitchy about whether it's going to be modulated or not, but we will try LFO3. Unipolar filter bank frequency. Sometimes, as I say, it doesn't seem to want to be modulated. Bring in some sync. If we do a velocity to sync, we've already got some different velocity mapped out inside the arpeggio.
try a different wave table. Cling clang is a bit too empty. Let's try friction. <laughs> Let's also change this to a grain complex wave table. Let's try the same one, friction. Should sound a bit different because obviously we're in the grain mode. So we are modulating shape index of oscillum. We'll do the shape index of oscillator two with the same one. Bring in a, a third oscillator. Now we can make a real plucky uh, sound with this if we use envelope three, which is a spare envelope, or envelope four even. Do oscillator three volume. Now, what would be nice now would be to modulate envelope for attack time, which you can't do. You can do amp envelope and filter envelope, but not the aux envelopes, which is a damn shame. Okay, as Varus is almost maxed out with voices. Okay, there's a lot of movement going on there. We've used three LFOs, two different envelopes. We've got a bit of a groove going on in here. Anything else that you can set going to the beat is always going to make things sound better. So we've got the rotary speaker. That's sounding really cool now. Let's um move that over duplicate it out see what it sounds like with the rest of the track <laughs> Not very good because I changed all the notes around, so if it was in key, maybe. Let's copy that again. Paste that. Let's actually try and... Uh, Let's just try and make one big long. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
that really wide I hope this doesn't crash sometimes it likes to crash Take a bit of work to get that to sit into the mix, but yeah, you could easily just change the wavetables up. Quickly just change them around. Mm -hmm. 